A very good evening and a warm welcome. Thank you so much for joining me on UCTV News. It is a Monday, the 30th of September, and we hope you had a very fruitful Monday. Well, we have so much happening this Monday in the news, but first, let's take a look at the headlines. This Uganda National Examination time Board time releases the timetable for the 2024 examinations. The UCE candidates under the new lower secondary curriculum for the award of the UCE uh, certificate. There is but Rwanda accused government of Between discrimination. All this and the on UCTV News this evening. Rwandans belong to Rwanda. Banyarwanda is one of the indigenous economic, uh, indigenous cultural, I mean, communities here in Uganda. Much yet again for joining us on UCTV News, and I'm Nora Osende. Starting off our newscast, the Executive Director of the Uganda National Examination Board, also known as UNAIB, Dano Dong, has today released the timetable for the 2024 national examinations. The timetable includes four examinations for primary living examinations, or PLE, two sets of Uganda certificates of examination, that's the UCE, and the Uganda Advanced Certificate of Education, that's the UACE. This is the first time that the board is going to examine the UCE candidates under the new lower secondary curriculum for the award of the UCE uh, certificate. And also, unlike in the previous years when we have administered three sets of examinations, this year we are going to administer four sets of examination. That is the primary living examination, as usual. The Uganda Certificate of Education examination will have two sets. The new curriculum, and then we will also have what we have called the transition examination which examination has been prepared to give an opportunity for those who sat the 2023 examination but would have wished to repeat and those who may have missed that examination uh, for various reasons. Because of the differences between the two curricula, the board felt it necessary to give an opportunity for that group uh, of, of, of persons. And this is a one-off examination. It will not be repeated after this examination. Timetable for all the four examinations indicating that the Uganda Certificate of Education examinations for the two, that is the new curriculum and the transition examination curriculum will be starting on the 11th of October 2024 uh, with a briefing. This will be a Friday. There will be a briefing of candidates throughout the country. That will be followed by the primary living examination. The briefing of candidates throughout the country will be on the 4th of November and then we shall conclude the examination season with the Uganda Advanced Certificate of Education Examination where the briefing will be on Friday the 8th of November. As is the practice, Uganda National Examinations Board develops a theme that guides the examination process. This year's theme is embracing security and holistic assessment of learners in a dynamic environment. That is embracing security and holistic assessment of learners in a dynamic environment. What this means is that we call upon 
all uh, stakeholders to seriously consider maintaining the security of our examinations so that all candidates throughout the country will take these examinations under more or less the same conditions. And then we are also assured that if that happens, then the certificates, the grades and certificates that eventually they will obtain will reflect their actual ability. We are also talking about holistic assessment. This is taking cognizance of the need uh, for us to examine the whole candidate, to examine the candidates on what they rem they know and they can do what they can remember, what we call the cognitive, what they can do with their hands and their attitudes. And this is a global trend and it is the spirit behind the new lower secondary uh, curriculum. And we, under this theme, we are also committing to use a variety of methods to examine our candidates, unlike in the old curriculum, where mostly it was pen and paper. Now, for this year's examinations, the Uganda National Examinations Board is going to examine a total of 1,320,400 for the four examinations. This is an increase of 7.8% uh, over last year, where the candidature was 1,224,300. Banyarwanda living in Uganda have expressed frustration with the government, accusing it of treating them as second-class citizens despite holding Ugandan citizenship. Now speaking to the media briefing today, Honorable Mkasambide, a former Ugandan representative in the East African Parliament and their lawyer, alongside Simon Kaitana, the representative of Banyaranda in the Buganda Parliament, highlighted that many Banyaranda have lived in Uganda since 1948, long before the country gained its independence. These are matters for which over 80% of Ugandans are either novices at law or have failed to understand. And almost 100% of security agencies have refused to understand. There is a difference between Rwandans and Banyarwanda. Rwandans belong to Rwanda. Banyarwanda is one of the indigenous economic, uh, indigenous cultural, I mean, communities here in Uganda. So what does the constitution say? When everybody reads the third schedule to the constitution of the Republic of Uganda, they actually tell these people that they are Ugandans and they are provided for in the constitution. I am sure all of you have heard about it. Now, that is not the law. A schedule is just a list. The law is what generates a citizen of Uganda. And that law is under Article 10 of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda. That law states that for one to be a citizen of Uganda by birth, you can be born either in or outside Uganda, it doesn't matter, but either of your parents or grandparents must have been a member of an indigenous community in Uganda as at 1st February 1926. But of either of your parents or grandparents to an indigenous ethnic community that existed in Uganda as at 1st February 1926. And I raised the following concerns. Number one, that that 1926 threshold is alien 
and opugnant to any provisions of any constitutions of Uganda from 1962 up to 1967. Number two, we don't know of any such register of members of ethnic communities that existed as at 1st February 1926. So it is an amorphous establishment. It is a figment of a fertile imagination by members of the Constituent Assembly, a chimera of some sort, that people dreamt of something and placed it in the laws of Uganda, which is unascertainable. We don't have any village in Uganda that had records of membership of any indigenous ethnic community in Uganda. You know exactly what happened on 27th of, uh, of September when you were going for consultative meeting with the people from, Kas people from Kasanda. We were stopped by police and uh, uh, they stopped us from uh, engaging with our community on this issue which is very important of uh, citizenship and the Banyarwanda rights in Uganda. I'm very sure uh, members of I'm very sure member of uh, media uh, media community you have seen this report which were which was which was uh, presented to the parliament of Uganda of uh, Uganda Human Rights Commission 2023 uh, listing among the communities that were going were going to be stateless Banyarwanda is number 1 I've never heard about these other communities, but I'm sure they are there also. You have also seen some of the uh, communications which have been made by immigration and the NIDA regarding the mass renewal of national ID, specifically uh, identifying Vanyarwanda among the communities which are going to apply for citizenship in this country. First of all, that is very wrong because Banyarwanda Now Christians have been called to collaborate with God and with one another by using the unique gifts God has bestowed upon them as this is essential for achieving God's purpose in their vocations. The message was delivered by Father Emmanuel Omnyoko, the parish priest of St. James Catholic Parish in Kapchora during the Tadal or the Toro Archdiocese Development Association of the Leading Monthly Mass at St. Chisito School in Bukolobi. Development Association of the Leyte, also known as Tadal, continues to bring together lay Catholics from the sub regions of Bukedi, Bugisu, and Sebei who reside outside the Archdiocese's immediate area, including places like Kampala in Tebe Wakiso and neighboring districts. In their monthly prayer gathering held at St. Chizito School in Bugalobi, this monthly mass was animated by the Tadal's Women's Guild. <laughs> The Mass was celebrated by Father Emmanuel Omnyokol, the parish priest of St. James Catholic Parish in Kapchwara, and co-celebrated by Father Phil Podi, the chaplain of Tadal, who proclaimed the Gospel from the Book of Mark. At that time, John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw a man casting out demons in your name, and we forbade him because he was not following us but Jesus said do not forbid him for no one who does a mighty work in my name will be able soon after to speak evil of me in his homily, Father Omnyokol drew from the day's gospel and the readings to emphasize the importance of collaborating with God and cooperating with one another. He encouraged the faithful to use the gifts that God has blessed them with in service to his people, reminding them that when God pours his spirit onto us, it is meant for the success of his divine plan. God pours out his spirit to anyone he chooses to use. You are members of Tadal. The young ones soon will be automatic members of Tadal. God has poured out his spirit among all of us. 
And he uses each one of us in a different way to contribute to the success of this group. He further highlighted how powerful the synergies in our vocations can come from cooperation and teamwork, calling on the congregation to work together for the greater good of the church and society. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, collaboration creates a powerful synergy for us to succeed in each of our vocations. When we collaborate together, when we work together, when we bring together our different gifts and talents as Tadal members, we are stronger even to do more. Some of the organizers of the mass, particularly the animators, expressed gratitude to the women for their commitment to organizing the mass, though they noted a few challenges, such as the difficulty in physical meeting and the need for more resources. Despite these obstacles, their dedication was evident in the success of the event. So sometimes we thought it was inevitable. We had to do it uh, virtually. Uh, we were online. And the meetings were not bad. And another challenge was uh, resources. This was a very bad month because parents were taking back their children to schools. And you know, getting money from them was very difficult. But I thank them. And I thank God for enabling them to come up and give what they gave. And I encourage all women out there, we are the mothers, if our children see us coming to church, if our children see us participate in the church activities, in the leadership, they are groomed, they admire, we speak through our actions to our children. So I encourage all of us out there. First of all, I thank the mothers, the women who have animated this month for the wonderful organization the preparation we called upon you each time would have a meeting each time would call on you when you see a call anytime you see my call i really appreciate i would like to encourage us so much as mothers as wives out there as sisters as aunties actually to encourage us to come to church please know god may we be able to bring our little children up in god's image let us teach them the wonders of the Lord. It's such a lovely feeling that we have this as adults and our children come up knowing the Lord. Look, about, look at how the world is here today. We need more Christians. The mass concluded with a joyful moment as couples cut cake to celebrate wedding and marriage anniversaries for the month of September, adding a touch of warmth and community to the event. A vital role in animating these monthly prayers, fostering a spirit of cooperation and faithfulness among Catholics within and beyond the Archdiocese of Toro. Nora Osende for UCTV News. Now about a thousand people, including school-going children, turned up for the annual Insambia Babies Home Fundraising Charity Walk on Saturday morning, which was flagged up by the Archbishop of Kampala, His Grace Paul Simogedere. Now this year's charity walks, which led to the successful fundraise of over 97 million, was held under the theme Walk for Babies. Last Saturday, several distinguished dignitaries joined this grace Paul Semogere, the Archbishop of Kampala Diocese, for this year's annual Sambia Babies Home Fundraising Charity Walk. Among those who participated in the walk were the event's chief fundraiser, John Musingus, the Uganda Revenue Authorities Commissioner General, Dr. Michael Ting, the Bank of Uganda Deputy Governor as the guest of honor, Sentinel Bankers Managing Director Fabian Kass as the chief walker, among many other participants. Just a few minutes off the 9 o'clock, the Archbishop blessed and flagged off the 6.2 kilometer walk from Uganda Railway Grounds in Kampala to Nsambia Baby's home. We can now start walking. You can get the break. The Uganda Police Force Brass Band led the procession with the eclectic mix of melodies that electrified even the oldest participants, thus setting the tone for a successful event. <laughs> the 
throughout the whole procession. No single participant encountered any other challenges. Neither road traffic misfortune me. As Uganda police, assisted by Zaverian, were at the top of their game in ensuring safety and order of both workers and other road users. Shortly after the walk, the chief fundraiser John Musinguzi reminded members of the public that helping the needy is not only their corporate social responsibility, but also a religious gesture recognized by God, upon which he pledged an eternal partnership with the organization as his way of working for heaven. We also want to assure you that as long as you are doing these good works, you have booked your place in heaven, because the Lord will receive you one day and say thank you for doing this for me. And that explains why we have come to join you today because we also want a place in heaven. Some of us do very difficult jobs where the world looks at us and judges us and says these ones are definitely going to hell. But we shall surprise them when we get to heaven and they find us seated somewhere very close to the high table. I want to tell you that I have come not for a five-year partnership, but for an eternity partnership. As long as I'm here on this world, as an individual, not with the title of Commissioner General, I will be a partner of the Sambia Baby's Home. Fabian Kass. The managing director of Centenary Bank, one of the event's sponsors, highlighted the need for the stakeholders to think beyond today in a bid to create a more secure future for these children. Coming up with a project that can sustainably always be bringing in something that will help, you know, to look after these children. And at some stage, I think we'll be welcoming that opportunity uh, to ensure that we contribute to something that will be sustainable, that will continue to be there even when all of us are long gone and as i said the problem will always be there the challenge so we want to ensure that there is something that will continuously be supporting as we get other you know supporters his grace paul samogirere reiterated the church's call for the faithful to help the most vulnerable in their respective communities please don't give up helping others because good god will hear your your, your, your act, whatever you're doing and works and duties and tasks and sacrifices and we reward you. Let us continue in this line with us so that we help one another and also help the, the, the world to know that we are created to be brothers and sisters. The most reverend cemented this with Saint Pope Francis quotation on giving a hand to Danide as he explains. Rivers do not drink their own water. Trees do not eat their own fruit. The sun does not shine on itself, and flowers do not spread their fragrance for themselves. Living for others is the rule of nature. We are all born to help each other. No matter how difficult it is, life is good when you are happy, but much better when others are happy because of you. In an exclusive engagement with some of the participants, this is what they had to say. I feel so happy about it because I've contributed to the help of Zambia Baby's Home. I decided because I'm inspired, these are also human beings and they are kids that need love and care. Next year or the next time there is a walk, please come and attend. It is free. There is no, there is no payment. Please come and attend the walk and support the babies at Nsamba Baby's Home. Meanwhile, the administrator of the home, Sister Maria Ted Nachans, appreciate the overwhelming turn-up of the sponsors and also maintain that the work is far from getting done by highlighting on a number of challenges which still bother them. But we still need more help or support from all of, all of you out there. The work is not easy, it's manageable, but it's not easy because the funds are not enough. We are limited with, with, with funds. First of all, you have to pay for electricity, for water, uh, the, the medical bills are also high, the salaries, uh, clothing, feeding, everything as you, you mention it. Zambia Baby's Home is one of the adoption homes under the Child Welfare and Adoption Society. 
a non-government organization affiliated to the Kampala Archdiocese. This year's charity work started at 8 a.m. at Kampala Railway Grounds, seeking to support vulnerable children at Insambia Baby's Home, a center providing welfare services to the abandoned, neglected, or orphaned children. Joseph Kabale, UCTV News. <laughs> UCTV News indeed. That takes us for a quick break. When we return, UCTV News continues. UCTV, good news for all. Thank you so much for staying with us on UCTV and welcome back from that break. Now moving on with our bulletin, the African Sisters Education Collaborative, ASEC, has celebrated 25 years of empowering religious women in Africa. Now themed Igniting Hope, Building Bridges and Creating Impact, ASEC Silver Jubilee coincided with the graduation ceremony of sisters from the Sister Leadership Development Initiative that was held at Bishop Hallon Gardens at St. Peter's Church in Insambia. Now Bishop Santos Lino Wanok of Lira Diocese who led the Eucharistic Mass as the congregation to remain steadfast in faith and obedience in their quest for Jesus Christ. Jesus wants you to go and meet him. And as they turn around in faith, in obedience, in humility, and begin to move towards the priest, they got healed on the way. They met Jesus the healer on the root of obedience and humility. Amen? The healing began to take place without even arriving where the priests reside. But they were obedient. They believed in what Jesus says. You see how important the word of God is. The word of God needs that obedience, needs that faith. That meeting him, I can offset the leprosy eating me up. The Archbishop Emeritus John Baptist Odama has reminded Ugandans during the International Peace Day 2024 celebrations held in Kitgum district that love is the foundation of peace. Archbishop Emeritus Odama urged citizens to spread love and unity, emphasizing that lasting peace can only be achieved through genuine care for one another. Now, the message called for national harmony and togetherness, encouraging Ugandans to work together for a peaceful future. I have loved each one of you. Then love, translate the love I have given you, translate it to the others. Spread it to the others. Don't keep it to yourself in a selfish way. No. Spread it. Love one another as I have loved you. I wish we could greet each other. We could be a land where we greet each other. We accept each other. We protect each other. We promote each other. We make ourselves together. Bring all the resources together. The intelligence of mathematics in one. Without peace, we cannot build schools, hospitals, roads, and livelihood. Peace is the foundation upon which development rests. One cannot speak of peace in northern Uganda without acknowledging the invaluable contributions of our religious leaders, our cultural leaders, our political leaders, especially our Archbishop Emeritus, Dr. John Baptist Odama. We thank you so much for fighting so hard for northern Uganda to receive peace that we have with all the religious leaders. You have done a lot and a happy. Thank you. As government, we are so grateful because you complement the effort of government. Thank you so much, Your Grace. Let's be peaceful in our households. Let's be peaceful at work. Wherever we work, we should be peaceful. As the Minister of State in charge of economic monitoring, I am particularly aware 
of the critical role that peace plays in fostering sustainable economic growth. And in the same Bible, in Galatians 5, 23 to 20, 22 to 23, it is stated, But the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, presence, calmness, forgiveness, and it is said that without those, there is no law. That is the Bible. Colleagues, it is not enough to talk peace. But the biggest question you should be asking yourself is, do you have peace with your neighbor? Well, that's all we had for you on UCTV News this evening. It has been nice having you. I'll see you tomorrow at the same time. For now, God bless and have a good evening. I am Nora Osende.